Hey folks, on this episode, we're going to hear a great conversation that Frederick had with Ben McCaskill, the president and COO of Smug Mug and Flickr. And they had just been on an incredible photo walk in San Francisco. And we're going to see the conversation in this episode. This is Twitter. Hey folks, it's Alistair Jolly here, a host, or co-host of This Week in Photo, and normally it's Frederick talking first, but this time it's me, but Frederick is here. Hi Frederick, how are you doing? Hey man, how's it going? It felt weird having somebody else do that that intro, weird, but, <laughs> but strangely nice, I liked it. <laughs> it's like crossing cool. the streams, crossing the streams, I started first this week. So. I love it, I love it. Well done, sir, well done, very good. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I did. Yeah. I got a chance to lead. The Flickr team asked me to lead the photo walk for them for their 20th birthday. Um, and we did basically uh, a walk down the Embarcadero starting at Red's Java House all the way down to Pier 23 restaurant and bar where the team had set up like a step and repeat background and some stools and microphones for me to sit down uh, and or not for me, but for the 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 speaker to speak in front of the crowd and that's what we did so I got a chance to interview Ben McCaskill who's the like you said the president and COO of Flickr and Smug Mug and Twip I guess right so mm -hmm. I got to sit down and chat with him and ask him a, a bunch of questions uh, that have been kind of like that I not so much that I didn't know because I knew these when I joined the company, but I felt like people needed to know these stories, right? And you know these stories, Alistair. You've been in the company for yep. for like what twenty years or so now, so you, you know you know the stories he talked about, right? With infrastructure and all that good stuff. I was just a boy, but no, it's not twenty years. It feels like it, but yeah, best part of twenty years, twelve years now. Um, yeah. yeah, and I've I've been very fortunate. I did a photo walk a few weeks ago to celebrate Flickr's actual birthday on the 10th of February in London. Had a great crowd there, had lots of great people, friends and some people from Flickr come along. The benefit of you doing the one in San Francisco was you had quite a bunch of the team there, including yeah. uh, Ben and, and some uh, Don, the founder, and um, mm -hmm. Alex, the head of, of Flickr there. Um, but yeah, I'm really interested to watch this episode because you got one-on-one -on -one with Ben and asked him some great comments. Uh, uh, great questions and got to hear a little bit about the story, the journey that we've been on since we acquired Flickr. So, as I mentioned before I started recording, I get to sit here with our chief operating officer, both Smug Mug and Flickr, and I'm going to throw a few questions at him. You guys get your questions ready if you have any questions about Smug Mug Flickr or photography, etc. This is the man to ask him. This is probably one of the few times that you'll have a chance to ask in person, live, right? He's always trapped. Very right? exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get it started. So the first thing, obviously, we're here for Flickr's 20th birthday. So round of applause for Flickr again. Woo! Flickr is 20. 20 years old. 20 years old. So obviously, the first question. Let's just do some foundational stuff. Flickr's mission. Like, what? To set the stage. Wow, you like put me on the spot there. Now Alex is going to be looking at me yeah. because I'm going to get at least one of them wrong. And we're going to compare with Alex's answers later. Uh, okay, I'm going to see if I can get the exact wording right here. Elevating the impact, artistry, and memories of all of your photos. Is it wrong order? Is it wrong order? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's the core permission. That's the, no, it's, it's, it's what we're building is, like, we are about photography and for photographers. And I think the people here get that in a way that a lot of people don't. When I, when I run into somebody random and they go, oh, Flickr, yeah, I, it's been a while, like, should I be using Flickr? So I, I don't know, how much do you love photography? How much is photography in your blood is important to you as a lifestyle? And if they're like, and I see their eyes light up. I was like, yeah, I mean, how happy are you with, with any of the other platforms? I don't even need to call it names because they're not building what we're building. We are building for photographers and photography. So at, at the end of the day, I think that's the easiest thing. What's the mission? We are really you know, planting our flag as we love photography and we hope our customers do too. Mm -hmm. And then I want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, the Just sort of the, the mindset around Flickr. I want to talk about why Smug Mug made the decision to purchase Flickr, i.e. rescue Flickr, however you want to position it. So what brought that about? But then also the 
just the mindset around the love of photography. That's one of the things that struck me when I joined the company was it, most companies that I've spoken to, and I've spoken to a lot of companies, right? Most companies I've spoken to, it's all about how do we increase uh, a, B, or C. Subscriptions, revenue, traffic, etc. Sure, those things are important, but it's there's another aspect to it with, with how Smug Mug approaches its audience and the Flickr audience and the Twip audience. So what, what do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head there with we care very deeply in a long-term way around photography. Yes, we have to make money or we go out of business and all of this disappears. So we do focus a lot on all of our business metrics. But at the core, the, the driving goal is to be what we hope to be the most respected and beloved brand in the photography space. I don't think there are many other companies out there right now that are focused on photography. You know, we're friends with all the camera companies you can imagine. And I, I don't want to say bad things about them because I really have, you know, a lot of love for all of these camera companies. But often, and I think exclusively, if we think about Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fujifilm, their camera divisions are this cute little, you know, wing of a medical imaging company and a technology company and, a, you know, they, those camera divisions care about photography, but you, you think about who else is out there really focused on you all, on photographers, and there's, there's really not much out there. So we feel, as people who are passionate about photography, who started this as a, you know, we started Smug Mug, you know, 22 years ago for our own photography, mm -hmm. right? And that's mm -hmm. just, just really how it started, and we've built since then we continue to remain anchored in that and we view ourselves in a very long-term way and we think there's you know a really interesting business and a space for us in that yeah and then one, one of the things one of the things you and i talked about uh was it yesterday day for yesterday uh was the the decision to stay independent your smug mug is a family-owned company which makes Flickr ostensibly a family-owned right. company. There's been many opportunities for larger, you probably all know the names, to gobble up Smug Mug and, or, and Flickr and make them a division of a larger, or kill them completely, right? Yeah. Why, why stay private? Yeah, I mean, right from the beginning, we built this bootstrapped and family run. This is really, really important to us. We feel uh, our sense of responsibility is to our customers and to our employees. Um, not to our investors, not to the public, not to the markets, not to anything else. We, yes. thank you. Yeah, that's right. And that's not easy. Like yeah. This, you know, most times it's the hard way to do it. I definitely would consider it the hard way. We didn't try it the other way, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe it would have been harder. Yeah. Um, but it's been critically important to us from the beginning to build with that in mind. It's allowed us to make really long-term decisions, like buying Flickr, which I'll tell you what, most people did not want a part of it. We, you know, we saw the competition. The competition ended up down to the wire being they were just going to delete the whole thing because uh, it was too much work. And so, you know, we've leaned into the hard efforts of that because we think it's the right way to build business. We, uh, Don and I, are members of, of industry groups that are focused on long-term private businesses, many brands you'd know, brands that are more than 100 years old, like White Castle Burgers, it's a family-run business, Radio Flyer, Little Red Wagon, it's a family-run business. These are all friends of ours, we trade a lot of notes. And you're right, like, I think it'd be really easy to sit there and think, oh, well, maybe they haven't had the right opportunity. But you know that we've had a lot of opportunities. I learned this week that uh, Frederick actually worked at a very large software company. Uh, you can go look at his LinkedIn and figure it out. Mm -hmm. While they tried to buy us. Yeah. And we didn't even listen to the price tag. No. Uh, we never have. And everybody you can imagine has tried to buy us. Every single tech company has tried to buy us, private equity firms, VC firms have wanted to invest, and we've said no to all of them so that we didn't have to compromise on our vision. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was, I remember thinking, are these guys crazy? <laughs> <laughs> From the other side, it must have been weird. It like, was wait, weird. They, wanted, they didn't want to know the dollar value? No. no. Right, that was, I mean, back then, it was like, that's the, that's the life cycle, yeah. right? You start a company, you get successful, a bigger fish eats you, and, you know, rinse and repeat. This company did not do that. But I don't think either brand would be here today if yeah. we had. If we'd taken any of those opportunities, there would be no Smug Mug, there would be no Flickr. Yeah. That would be it. They'd be gone. And I like that. I'm so confident. How many, I mean, we're sitting here. Sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would be sad too. And, but yeah, thank you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're sitting here celebrating 20 years. How many tech companies, how many platforms? And, you know, some are going to, like, 
listen, uh, Facebook's not at, at uh, 20 years, but we all know it will be, right? So there are some, but we're talking about vanishingly few that, that have survived that long. Go back and look at the contemporaries of Flickr. Not, not photography specific, but like other platforms that were around them. They, they're not just gone, they've been gone for a decade. Yeah, yeah. So here comes the hard questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. So continuing that on, along that vein, Flickr has been on a roller coaster, yeah. like we talked about at the beginning of the photo walk, in terms of acquisitions, Yahoo, right? You know, all the all the things, which makes photographers nervous about choosing Flickr as a permanent home for their. Yeah. So like, what if is Smugma going to kill Flickr? You know, what's what's going to go on with that? I know the answer to that. <laughs> you and I talked about how I think everyone needs to know the answer to yeah. that and why. Can you? address that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we view very, very long term on Flickr. Um, it absolutely will be around. It will be around for a, a ridiculously long term. It will be around longer than I will be, uh, which is a pretty exciting horizon to think yeah. about. Mm -hmm. um, we invest in this sustainably. We think about this, not just our current generation, but multiple generations after. This is why we have friends out there with hundred year businesses and multi, several hundred year businesses. Um, so, like for us, this is critically important. This is why we bought Flickr. Yes, we thought there probably could be a good business buried in there, but there were easier ways to grow our business than to buy Flickr and really invest in that. And so we did that because we couldn't conceptualize a world that didn't have Flickr. Yeah. The greatest collection of photography that humans have ever put together, and George told me this, and it has stuck with me ever since, the greatest collection of photography that humans have ever put together was so close to being deleted and lost forever. Yeah. Those photos are gone if this doesn't happen. And so everything we do is with that in mind, building for a very, very long-term future where what we're building now matters for future generations. Yes. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned George, right? Yeah. And I went, which is a perfect segue because I wanted to talk about the Flickr Foundation, which George heads up. Can you talk about why why the Flickr Foundation is important and what it is? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great opportunity. And I'm sorry, I'm going to put you on the spot just to at least wave, George. But we're really blessed to have George Oates here. George was on the founding initial Flickr team pre-Yahoo. George is so instrumental to so much of what you love about Flickr. She set the tone and builds so much of the community and the design. And, you know, in the wake of almost losing Flickr, and there are so many stories, I can't wait to write the book someday. We just need a few more people to retire that won't get mad at us. Um, <laughs> the deal was off so many, many times. They canceled the deal on us so many, many times. And it was, Flickr was just days away from getting deleted. And then, six months after we bought Flickr, uh, the CEO of, of the subsidiary at Verizon went to the Wall Street Journal and said, we should have just deleted Flickr. It was such a hassle. We should have just turned it off. And it's out there. That's in the Wall Street Journal. I'm not making this up. You, I, can, I can provide the links. Um, and that just kind of hit me super hard. As we were sitting there thinking afterwards, I was like, it's, it's so fragile. It's yeah. so fragile. Yeah. So in December 2020, uh, as with most of you, I was locked in my house, um, right? We're in pandemic. I'm bored out of my mind, and I'm trying to think of what we can do that would matter, that would, that would you know, kind of be worth getting out of the bed in the morning for. I'd never met George. I'd heard of George for most of my professional career. I, I knew who George was. And I looked up an email address, and I cold emailed George, and I said, hey, listen, I want to talk Flickr. And if you don't want to talk Flickr, that's fine. Like, it, 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 that's a different area in your life. And uh, long story short, we got working on what do we do to make sure that doesn't happen ever again? Because I could still screw this business up. I probably shouldn't say that at a company event, <laughs> but like, I could still screw this business up. We, you know, we can make mistakes. We're humans. How do we make this more resilient than just human decisions? And you know, I think the, the magic is George kept challenging me to think bigger, think longer, think more grand in our mission. And what came out is the Flickr Foundation, a proper 501c3, truly independent, nonprofit foundation aimed at preserving and sharing our cultural heritage. So we started with millions and millions of you know, existing historic uh, cultural heritage works that have been added to Flickr over the years from institutions like you know, the Library of Congress, who's been an amazing partner, the British Library, and, and more than 100 others. Mm -hmm. So we started there, but 
especially with George driving the vision, we've really expanded to think about how do we make sure that what is on Flickr now is here in 100 years? Because we all know it's historically significant. We know it will be historically significant. If you ask a digital archaeologist in 150 years, would they want the current archive to be accessible to them? We all know what they would say. It's not a question. We, we know what they would say. So how do we make sure we get there? And so. We're still in the early, early days, um, but with George's tremendous leadership, we're, we're scoping out 100-year plans. What does is, what is a Flickr collection look like mm -hmm. in 100 years? We don't even know what device we'll be accessing it on, mm -hmm. right? That, that much we don't know. Mo we know. There's a lot more we don't know than we do know, which is exciting. And the more companies and, and organizations we talk to about this are kind of blown away. Like, I've talked to a 300-year-old a, a uh, company fairly recently about this, and, and they admitted they didn't start thinking about a 100-year business. They accidentally got to 100 years by making a lot of really intentional good decisions. Mm -hmm. Very few people start out and say, OK, what, what are we going to do? But that's what uh, the, the foundation team is doing, which is, I mean, to me, incredibly exciting. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's one of, the, one of the key points of your photos are safe, right? And I think people, we've been trained. We, as photographers, have been trained, OK, there's this brand new thing out there that wants my photos, and they promise all these things and then we get an email that says, sorry, delete all, <laughs> copy all your stuff down by the end of the month or it's gone. They, they missed a Series B fundraise yep. and yep. that's it. That's, yep. It's gone. How many people here, just out of curiosity, how many of you have lost something you created to an online platform? I'm talking poetry or writing or photography or something to an online platform. That, yeah, almost everybody in the room has lost Let something. Let the record show 50% of the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Way more than 50%. Most people here have lost something they didn't want to lose. It's, that's, that's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about infrastructure. One of the things that surprised me when I joined the company was just the lore around the when you Smug Mug acquired Flickr, the work that went into mm -hmm. getting Flickr into the Smug Mug <laughs> kind of proper, and uh, yeah, the size of Flickr, and how you almost broke the internet on the Eastern Seaboard, and all I that. Kind of did. Can yeah. you can you talk to that? Be like, I think that's important. Yeah, you know, this is one of the kind of lesser told stories about the acquisition. Like, I think most people can infer that the business was challenged. You know, Verizon's not going to dump a money-making business, and so we're here, a small family-run business that's that's taking on a, a business challenge that Verizon wants no part of. Right? That that should be intimidating enough. But the other side of it was this technical uh, challenge internally. From what I've heard, I wasn't in these meetings um, back in in the Yahoo and Verizon era, but. They'd scoped out a migration to AWS out of Yahoo's old data centers. At the time we acquired Flickr, the average server age was around eight years old. So they were on old hardware. It's no surprise, a legacy brand that had been around forever. Um, they had scoped the project of modernizing into AWS as about a 36-month project, is, is basically what my recollection is. When they when we came to them and started deal negotiation, we scoped it at 24 months, which they're really interested. We could migrate all of your data in 24 months. The way these things go, or at least the way it went, is somehow that worked its way down to 12 months, take it or leave it. So we had a third the time that Verizon thought it would take. And if we didn't do it, we didn't, that was it. And there was no wiggle room. So we said yes, kind of probably really foolishly, but we were <laughs> determined at this point. We were locked in. So I mean, it really went down. Don and I uh, kind of locked eyes and said, "Don, you you do the technical migration. I'll work on the business, and I'll see you in like 12 months. How does that work?" And it's, it's kind of how it worked. Um, and, and yeah, the scope was staggering. Like, so not only did we have a lot of data to migrate, and I'll talk about that in a second, yeah. but I think it's worth pointing out for the for the technical nerds in the room just how much of Yahoo's system was built on proprietary Yahoo technology. And some of you experienced that very firsthand. It wasn't PHP. It was YPHP, which means so much of Yahoo had to be rebuilt, not just copied over. We, had to, well, we weren't allowed to use YPHP anymore. We didn't want to, but we also weren't allowed to. And so like, well, guess what? We had to refactor like all sorts of stuff there. But the, the actual data migration, the technical data migration, is 
I, you know, I don't know, it's way up there with some of the biggest and most complicated that have ever been run. Yeah. Um, I remember at one point Don was doing uh, speed of light calculations to figure out how fast an electron can actually move across the space of time that we're like in, in physical space. I was like, wait, no, you, you're, you're joking, right? He was like, well, I mean, we do have a deadline. And if we don't start moving <laughs> electrons now, then we will run out. And so, wow. um, so we did. We, we moved uh, what's now uh, hundreds, mm -hmm. plural, petabytes. I don't know how many of you have you know, a lot of petabytes in your house. I don't. Um, hundreds of petabytes. We moved it over the public internet. Uh, we talked to Amazon, who have been amazingly close partners to us for a long time. They have a really cool product called a snowmobile, which they back a semi-truck up. And the semi-truck is a data center. And they plug it in, move all the data, and then drive it. Because at that scale, it's actually faster to drive the data yeah. than it is to move it. Well. It's very, also very expensive, um, and so we said no to that. Uh, and Verizon and Amazon, two kind of small, quaint little companies, <laughs> swore up and down that it'd be fine. So we turned it on, and the eastern seaboard went offline. <laughs> we really actually crashed pretty much the entire internet uh, structure on the Eastern Seaboard, and both Verizon and Amazon called us begging for mercy. Cool. And we did. We dialed it back, and then we said, but we're kind of like, we're on the clock here. And so we asked, well, you know, can we have more time maybe? And the answer was no. Uh, so we said, okay, well, then you better figure out how to handle the, the volume then. And we, we did eventually work with both of them and, and figure it out. And all the Flickr photos moved, and all the data moved, and we have it all. But it was, it was a non-trivial task to pull off in 12 months. Wow. And what year was this? Uh, it started 2018. We finished um, in May of 2019. Okay. Okay. So then, just touch on a little bit. Um, and by the way, just just sorry, one last point. We, what we made it by about 12 hours, six hours. Uh, I mean, uh, maybe little drips and drafts. We actually had a couple of days worth of breathing room. Ah, a couple of days worth of breathing room. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. He didn't say that at the time, did he? No. <laughs> Listen, it was it was real touch and go there for the end, and, but. Yeah. Well, a lot of white knuckles. A lot of white knuckles. So touch on a little bit here the, the company's relationship with AWS or Amazon's, you know, their, their yeah. data storage service. I have a feeling that we were early on when yeah. they launched So um, uh, the current CEO of Amazon, who's taken over from uh, Jeff Bezos uh, after Jeff's retirement, um, the first time I met him uh, was with Don when he came to our living room, because we didn't have an office at the time, and he had this kind of silly little idea that he wanted to sell us storage. Um, there was no AWS. This was just Amazon trying to sell storage. Um, they had no other services. And they didn't really have this one yet, either. They, they, they had theory, they had like a notepad. Where they're like, wouldn't it be cool if somebody bought my storage? And that was about kind of what they had. And so Don sat down with Andy, uh, really sharpened the pencils, and said, well, look, you're too expensive. We do this cheaper than you do. And a few weeks later, and this is a dramatic oversimplification, but it's also quite accurate. A few weeks later, Andy comes back and says, well, now we're cheaper than you are. Are you in? Sure. OK. And at the time, they're like, OK, well, like, how much are you in? Well, we're, we're in for all of our corpus. And they said, well, what's that? It's six terabytes. And they panicked. Six terabytes. We can't handle six terabytes. Right now, it's, you probably have a memory card that's about six terabytes. <laughs> so my watch. At the time, that was, that, was, that was a thing. And so like, give us a few weeks. And again, this is, there's a really great story here that I'm butchering because I'm trying to keep it really short. But in the end, we were customer number one of AWS, uh, what would eventually become AWS, which is pretty cool. Um, and I re always remember the headline. The headline was, don't trust your photos to SmugMug because they trust it to Amazon. Um, you know, the history's been kind to us on this one, um, and you know, we had backups. We had, you know, listen, we, we didn't just dive head first in. We did it very pragmatically, but we were we were all in with them, and you know, sat down at that, at that time and really scoped out. Well, what would it look like to be entirely out of our own data centers? And this, I think, this is really significant, just kind of for trivia point of view. Don's background is pioneering data centers. Don pioneered the first data centers in the Bay Area eBay launched in a little chicken wire and two by four cage that Don had helped build and network in the 90s. Like, 
that was actually our expertise. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons we were in something like storage at that scale is this is what we knew. So for us to go and work with Amazon was a kind of a big gamble. We scoped out how do we get out of data centers. It's been a phenomenal relationship for us. Uh, Don sits on the customer advisory board for AWS. We've had a huge influence on their roadmaps. So much stuff has been built for SmugMug and now Flickr and then sold to other customers because of that. Wow. Wow. Okay, let's, let's switch, switch from the back end to the front end. So the user interface of Flickr. Yeah. What are your thoughts on modernizing or the user interface, or is it where we want it to be right now, or what? You take it from there. Yeah, I, I mean, great question. I'm going to get Alex glaring at me. It's, I think it's going to hide behind <laughs> here. I'm going to make bold promises. No, like we do think long term. We have a small team. Right? I think most people would be really surprised at how small the team is. Um, but I'll, I'll even just anchor it in when we acquired Flickr from Yahoo and they joined us. There was only 31, I think, 30 people who came over. That was all that were keeping Flickr online, is 30 people. And we've grown the team some, but we grow it sustainably. We first had to fix the business, right? which we have done. Flickr has turned profitable and sustainable in long term. But now we build that way. One of the things I am incredibly proud of, I'm just as proud as I am, that, or I'm way more proud, honestly, of not having taken all the money, not compromising our vision, is we've never done layoffs, ever. Yeah. Right? And yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. This is something the Flickr team had been through quite a few times inside Yahoo. There's a lot of people who do that sort of stuff. We, we build more methodically and plan longer term so that we don't get to those situations. I generally do layoffs as a, as a failure of planning, mm -hmm. right? Like it's a, you got yourself in a situation and who knows, someday it may be necessary. Um, you know, we at least had a moment to think about it during pandemic. We lost a lot of money in those first few months when all professional photographers, and I apologize to all of you who also went through this as professional photographers, but what, like March, April, May of 2020? Yeah. Every event, every wedding, every everything got shut off. Well, that hit Smug Mug really hard and we managed to avoid that only because we've been so methodical about uh, planning long term. So this is all to set up like, yes, are we moving slower than we'd like to move on continuing to improve and modernize the Flickr platform? Sure. Have we made huge improvements though in that time? Like we set out and I, Don did a really great job publicly, like right when we stepped in with the Flickr team. We got in the Flickr forums, got on Reddit, got on social media, on Twitter. Um, and just talked about what our goals were. Our goals were things like getting rid of Yahoo login, getting rid of or dramatically cutting down on spam. Like, I, I don't know how many of you remember, like, we're not there, and that's a forever battle, right? But 2018, Flickr was a wash in spam. It was, that was rough, and we immediately invested in that. So we tackled a bunch of those things. We've made feed improvements. We've made all sorts of improvements. We have a lot more improvements we want to make, but we also have this, like, huge scope of, of customer base globally that we want to make sure we're taking care of everybody. So we do approach it from a research first point of view, from a prioritization point of view. And so, listen, I'll tell you, it's probably more maddening at times internally than it is externally. Like, oh my gosh, why didn't they fix that? And I'm like, oh my gosh, why didn't we fix this? And, you know, but yeah, I mean, I think I'm really proud of what we've done. I wish we've continue to do more, we'll continue to do more, we'll build sustainably, the better Flickr does financially. We, we have a long track record of investing all of that money into our team and building more and more cool stuff. So yeah. Yeah. that's kind of a non-answer, but that's at least how well, I think about it. Well, you teed up Alex to, <laughs> oh, great. to put him on the spot. <laughs> I put him on the spot. Who's coming up next? Um, so, okay, so my last question here. Okay. Um, artificial intelligence. Yeah. Where does Flickr, Smug Mug, you fall on both the the creation of AI type imagery and adding the, you know, building a model using our gigantic data set um, and just using or, or users submitting AI files into Flickr. Sure. Like, just yeah, the that's whole a broad thing. topic. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of people, I'm, I'm excited in all sorts of areas. Um, I, was, I was showing uh, Frederick earlier why I like photography, just personally, why I like photography more than I like prompt engineering and generating visual imagery. And the answer was most, I like easily demonstrated by handing him my Voigtlander 3514 and just saying, just turn the knobs and dials. And it's like, I love 
the feeling he, he was doing it all. He's like, oh, whoa. It's like when you close the door of a BMW, yeah. you just right. chunk, you know? I like holding that. I'm particularly fond of Boylander glass. So like holding that. So listen, photography speaks to me. I don't draw. I don't paint. Uh, I, I have I created AI imagery. Yeah, and I've created some fun stuff, usually for a practical purpose and sometimes just to be silly. It doesn't speak to me the way photography does, but it does speak to people the way photography yeah. does. And, and I think supporting those visual artists and these kind of creative you know, endeavors on photography is interesting. We have communities that have sprung up. They're great. I, 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 you know, I view, especially on Flickr, I see certain things I want to be inspired by, and I want the controls to have my feed inspire me. I apologize. I'm really going to throw a community under the bus here. But nothing but love, especially because my grandma is big into the community. Um, birding is not like I'm not a birder, um, but I will tell you what, we have a lot of birders on Flickr. I think most of you know that, right? And I like the fact that I'm not following birders. And we have a lot of video game photographers, um, and I don't, you know, generally follow the video game stuff. Even though I play a lot of video games, it's the photography side. It's not doesn't speak to me for whatever reason. And I'm similar with AI. Like I, I there's I see some really inspiring, really cool, really creative stuff. They put a lot of work into it. it you know, it doesn't speak to me, but it does speak to others. I'd love to continue to create those communities. Um, I just I, I'd love to have it like know what it is and, and yeah. that sort of thing. So um, you know, I, I think there's a place for creation and sharing on Flickr. Um, and you know, I, I think the other question that that often goes. Uh, hand in hand with that is well, what is the future of photography? And, and you know, I talked about painting. I don't paint, but a lot of people still paint. Mm -hmm. Photography didn't kill painting; it changed painting forever, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I've never sat for a painted portrait. It sounds fun. I've never done it. I've sat for many, you know, camera portrait sessions over my life. Like it changed things forever. Sure. Um, but painting is still a popular hobby, and in the years after photography was invented. Uh, this amazing rise uh, of a trend, especially in France, of the Impressionist movement came about. And listen, I haven't done the research. But somebody should go do the research. But I love, at least romantically, I love the idea that suddenly when you could take hyper-realistic photos instead of having to paint them, painting became a little bit more about what you felt rather than what you saw, right? Um, I, I think it will change photography forever, AI generation. But it's sure as heck not going to go away, right? Um, and for the working photographers in the room, I'll tell you, nobody's ever going to generate, hey, please, you know, they're going to go to Dolly or, or any of the others in, or Mid Journey and say, can you create my wedding photos? Or can you create the graduation photos of my kid from high school? Like, that's not going to happen. There's still, like, a lot of room for photography, for professional photography, for creation. <coughs> On the model side of things, you know, I, I think we're already using a lot of AI for, for things our customers are asking us for, mm -hmm. right? Working high volume photographers um, continue to want better and better like facial recognition depending on what sort of thing you're doing, right? Yeah. That's the less sexy side of the current conversation on AI, but it is every bit kind of as much as the generation uh, side of things. Uh, you know, I think we'll continue to invest there. Are we ever going to create, say, a generation model based on what we have? I don't know. Um, I, when we were talking, I was like, I mean, we have a, a basic camera interface inside our app, so there is like already some creation thing. I think it'll be up to what customers want to do. Um, as with everything, what I can promise is we'll approach it ethically. It's just a core anchoring thing for us. It's endlessly maddening to me, just like it is to all of you, that none of these companies asked us permission. And no matter how much whack-a-mole we play, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're doing this to the biggest companies on planet Earth, too. They're ripping off Google stuff and Facebook stuff. And like, you know, they're ripping off ours as well. Like, that is frustrating to me. So whatever we do, we will definitely keep in mind our photographers. Yeah. And it it's, goes both ways. What do they want? Like, what can we provide? Like, if it turns out they really want a pretty cool community and a way to generate this stuff inside Flickr, well, uh, I'll listen mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. And then also, how do we get there in a way that we feel proud about so that if I'm asked that question sitting in an audience like this, I'm like, yeah, awesome, glad you asked, let me tell you. Right, right. Yeah, there's so many so many questions. Uh, last one that we'll, we'll end on is uh, from your perch. Yeah, you, you, you're, looking at all the movements and ebbs and flows in the industry, technology, technique, all that stuff. 
What gets you most excited right now? Like what, what I mean, it changes, I'm oh, sure, week to week, but yeah. right now, what, what, what are you excited about? Well, if we're like hyper-focusing, the X100 VI has got me a little excited. Like, like if we're hyper focusing, that's my yes. next camera. Yeah, um, new Fujifilm camera. Yeah, for, yeah. New, the new Fujifilm <laughs> just got announced. Um, yeah. I'm hoping to get my hands on it next week at WPDI. Mm -hmm. We'll see. So, like, you know, on a, on, a, on a micro level, I I love that. Uh, you know, I've got my Apple Vision Pro. Uh, it is staggeringly good at panoramas and immersive photos. Uh, not all of them work yet, like all the Insta360 photos I've been taking, and I've really, like, that's another one. I'm loving the 360. Um, Insta360 is a really, really fun video and photography platform if you're at all intrigued. It's kind of taken some of the stress out of photography for me because I'll just recompose it later. I'll, like, reframe it or stuff. But now also, you know, the immersion, the panoramas, like sitting in the Apple Vision Pro and, like, pulling up some of my panoramas from places I've backpacked to years ago and just, like, Oh my gosh, I'm there. Like, I'm there. This is wild. Um, I think that's really, really exciting. Yeah. So, like, all sorts of, like, little kind of photo geeky nerdy stuff I'm excited yeah. about. But yeah. I would say I would say the immersive experience. I'm, uh, like, I'm already really being mindful of how I'm taking photos and videos. And, like, am I going to want this someday in my Apple Vision Pro? Well, then it, even if I'm shooting it on, you know, today I was carrying my A7R3, even if I'm shooting it there, I might also get a 360 and, mm -hmm. and hopefully mm -hmm. soon, like, stereoscopic 360. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. That's one of the big things, like, the, the spatial, spatial video and spatial photography, I think from, the, from a commercial standpoint, for example, being able to, one, <clears throat> Excuse me. One day, being able to go hang out in the the throne room in Game yeah. of Thrones, right? Right, and just kind of look around and have it feel what like what yeah. they want you to feel in there. I think those and millions more experiences. Uh, let's end it right there. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Amazing. Well, there we go. Great conversation, Frederick, with Ben. Uh, I'm sure you had a wonderful time at the photo walk, but to sit down and have that conversation with Ben really gave us some insight into stuff that. You know, I know, I know those stories. I live and breathe them every day, but it must have been nice for you to be able to hear those firsthand from Ben and now share them with the community, right? Yeah, yeah, it was for sure. It was a good conversation. And as I was saying, I've told Ben uh, in private and during that talk was just the, I guess the idea that the permanence of Flickr and just because of the, the you know, the, the fact that the company was acquired by Yahoo, first was independent, then acquired by Yahoo, then got eaten by Verizon and then Smug Mug bought them. So for there's a lot of there's been a lot of like hot potato mentality around trusting Flickr with your images. And I think one of the main things that needs to get out there is that Flickr is going to be around beyond us, probably. Right. So and it is a more than most, I would argue, a safe place for your images. And it shouldn't for, for a variety of reasons. George's Flickr Foundation one and the infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I feel like I don't know if you agree with it, but I, I feel like that is one of the main messages, messages beyond the user interface, beyond the feature set or the size of the database or AI or any of that stuff is just the pixels you put there today will be there tomorrow. And <laughs> here's why, right? You agree yeah, with that? that's, yeah, I think that's the one takeaway I want people to realize, you know, we can have debates every other day about the user interface should do this. No, I want it to do that. And, you know, there's so many users there, it's difficult to get, get consensus around things like small tweaks and changes but the one takeaway i want everybody to realize is that you know we're in this for the long haul we're making really smart decisions about the path and the future for for flicker with that mentality that you know this is too important we need to make solid decisions for the long haul. And that's just how we approach business in general. So it was great to hear that from Brian. And as I say, I hope that really resonates with the community uh, who shared their images on Flickr. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, cool, man. Well, we'll leave it right there. What a, what an easy episode, right? Just a little bit of talking at the beginning and the end for you, right? But we both led these photo walks. I wish I wish yeah. you had had the opportunity to do some interviews at yours as well, but we'll get there. We'll get there in the future. Get Alistair in the uh, yeah. Across the Pond Bureau of This Week in Photo as we move forward. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll uh, we'll definitely get, you know do more of these things and and get better at uh, sharing them. But I couldn't be in two places to do two photo walks this time, so I'm glad I got one done in London, and I knew it was in safe hands with you in San Francisco. So well done in leading that. Yep, yep. Well done to you too, sir. All right, we'll leave it right there. Thank you everybody for listening to this episode. Remember, uh, like and subscribe to the This Week in Photo channel to get more like this and help us feed the the algorithm. And we'll see you next week. Take care, Alistair. This is Twitter.